YouTube. How's everyone doing? Jags to Riches, James Peters. Thank you all so much for your time. Straight to it. First, in honor of our man, my guy, reigning defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart. National Robe Day. Today's videos, guys, it's uh, obviously breaking news. There's been a lot of rumors swirling recently, both around Rob Williams and Ben Simmons potentially returning. Now it is official because Woj has tweeted about it, essentially stating that Rob Williams, bearing any setbacks, will be set to make his return game three. It's looking like they'll be ramping him up, bringing him on slow in game three, and depending on, you know, how, his, how he performs, and more importantly, how he responds, they may actually ramp him up more game four. And game four is what's looking like the potential return of Ben Simmons, bearing any setbacks again. So let's transition over. Here it is right here, guys. Bearing a setback, Boston Celtics center Rob Williams intends to return in limited minutes for game three versus Brooklyn on Saturday. If those minutes go smoothly, the expectation is that he'll resume a significant minute load for game four on Monday. Remember, this is going to be upcoming Saturday. Go smoothly. Resume more minutes on Monday. Now, as you all know, right now in this series, the Boston Celtics have a 2-0 lead. Starting with that game one instant classic, the 114-115 win with Jason Tatum buzzer beater as time expired. They would follow that up game two, which was just as dramatic. This damn series has been so stressful. Game two, you would actually see the Boston Celtics with nearly a 17-point lead. Not nearly, actually a 17-point lead at one point in that game. And it just seemed like, I mean... Bruce Brown with the nine unanswered to start the game. Kevin Durant, 10 points in the first quarter. And as you can see, they still withstood that. A 27-point performance by Kevin Durant. But again, he had to work for all of it. They made him so uncomfortable. Again, consecutive games with six-plus turnovers. I mean, they have just thrown everything, including the damn kitchen sink, at this man. Every time he touches the ball, you've got people, you know, blitzing him. And it's not even when he has the ball in his hands. It thinking basketball one of the best best channels on youtube just did an actual breakdown hours ago and it just shows that the celtics even when durant doesn't have the ball in his hands they're attacking al horford is shading it's just grant williams i mean it's it's really just incredible it's the game plan that they have for him but again you've seen bruce brown goran Dragic would again another really big first half but the boston celtics were too much they had seven players that were in double figures i mean jalen brown in the pregame show uh, several of us carlito rashid myself were calling for a big jalen brown game didn't start like that but he definitely finished and i mean the defensive plays the strips the fast breaks i mean he was the threes i mean he was on fire he was huge but this game was about the other guys i mean that's something that we said several times the other guys the other guys uh that was as you can see because Al Horford, Daniel Tice, Grant Williams, those guys were all heroes in that first half while we were waiting for our guys, our stars to, you know, come alive. As you can see, even Tatum triple-double watch when it was all said and done. 19 points, 10 rebounds, or excuse me, 19 points, 10 assists with six rebounds. Jalen, 22, 4, and 6. But you can see Horford, 16 and 6. That's coming off of like a, what, a 20 and 15 game? Daniel Tice, who was really not good in that first game, especially in the drop coverages. And in fact, I thought that, one of my big questions were what what was going on and I, that was answered pretty quickly i realized that tice is so paranoid with stepping up on Kyrie because drummond is bodying him in the board so it just seems like oh my god if i creep up too much and contest then i'm out of position to get a rebound and drummond was just eating him so i i, I immediately had my question answered on why he was shading down so low but tice was huge in this game as well as grant williams 17.6 rebounds peyton pritchard fantastic off the bench 10 points, four assists, hitting some big shots, played huge, huge minutes. Like I said, this was across the board. You know, I mean, Marcus Smart with his left hand to ice the game. It was another top to bottom, beautiful, beautiful performance by this team. But again, looking at the big story today, it's Rob Williams set to return, which would be tomorrow for game three. I mean, 
limited minutes, so we might only see 15. And if he's looking good, 20, you know, I wouldn't see anything more than that. People, you have to remember, first off, Robert Williams, one of the, you know, feel good, I mean, just awesome stories of this year. Here's a gentleman who has flashed so much potential in the past, gets his first opportunity as a starter, comes in the year with an extension that people were questionable, but, you know, had mixed reactions about. And he's been fantastic. He really has. He's clearly gone from a bench player to one of the best starting centers in the game. He was, he literally got a first place vote for the defensive player of the year award. He's all defensive level center. And I mean, you hear the respect that he, you know, when Bruce Brown was making those comments about Tyson Horford, what was he saying? Basically how people fear and respect Al Horford, or excuse me, uh, Rob Williams when he's out there, when it comes to actually attacking the basket. So he's a walking double-double, basically averaged 10 points, 10 rebounds. He was right up there at the top, I think, when it comes to blocks. So I think 2.2, so just below the league leader in blocks. And I mean, he's his, go watch that Draymond Green and Jason Tatum interview as Draymond who's one of the best passing bigs in the game, stated Rob Williams is one of the best passing bigs in the game. His ball movement, his playmaking, the vertical spacing that he provides, Lob City, basically Lob to Rob. I mean, but the biggest thing is that he just played a month ago. Like that, when it comes to the whole Rob versus Ben argument, that really is like the biggest, biggest advantage of rob is he was just here he was here for the majority of that run because don't forget the celtics missed an entire week of ball so my point is there wasn't that much missed you know three weeks of play essentially he i mean he was just here just part of that big long rotate run that we were going on when we were on fire and this is a gentleman even in limited minutes last year he averaged what 18 minutes a game and still averaged i think 8.7 rebounds and two blocks basically um, so Rob Williams is one of those guys that can impact the game in a limited amount of time, just based on him not being a huge offensive guy, you know, powerhouse needs, you know, 20 plus shots, even 10 shots, you know, he's just going to be a guy that's going to come in. Let's not forget. I mean, both of some of his last performances against the Nets, just the last game he played against them, he had five blocks that playoffs performance from last year. He had what, eight, nine blocks. So and if nothing else, just if he gets out there and has a block, that alone, you know, will now make some of the KD, Kyrie, and the people that are attacking think twice. So, again, Rob Williams, that is a huge, huge, huge win for the Boston Celtics. I have been saying it, you know, that, I mean, getting back both of these gentlemen is it's not going to be a negative. I mean, these are two outstanding players. And then speaking of Ben Simmons, it's looking like Ben could potentially be coming back for Monday's game, game four. Now, again, Ben Simmons' timeline is very interesting just based on the fact that you've been hearing all kinds of different rumors around him for a while. As you see right here, bearing a setback, or excuse me, clicked on the wrong one. But basically right below the um, Rob Williams, bearing a setback, Brooklyn's Ben Simmons plans to play in game four on Monday versus the Boston Celtics. So again, you're talking about the next two games. We'll see both these gentlemen return. Ben Simmons, 16 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, career. I mean, one of the best defenders in the game. Basically finished number two last year to only Rudy Gobert. I mean, as a guy we've seen score 40 points on a given night, one of the best transition players that we get. I mean, his fast break ability. I mean, playmaking, especially in the fast break, lobs, lobs, I mean, He's he's excellent. I mean, he's, it's a shame, you know, because if that dude just worked on his shoot, like if he could develop a shot, not even just a three, just a basic shot, he would be so, you know, spectacular. But again, I just think, in my opinion, that it is a lot to ask someone who has not played in like 10, nearly 11 months to come back in their first return to action in over a year or nearly a year, excuse me, be in the middle of a heated playoff series that you're losing even if they win game three when he returns they'll still be losing i just that's a hard ass let's not forget this last man 
PTSD, trauma, mental, that is real. So even though these are professionals, he's probably had the best help that there is. We still got to see it. Let's see what happens when this man returns literally in the middle of a heated playoff series. Now, again, he's going to return in a home game. That'll be good. But let's see what happens when he goes back game five to Boston. So, again, Ben Simmons... <laughs> I don't know. People have been saying some crazy things like they think he's going to negatively affect the Nets. I think that's silly. I mean, I, I expect him to be on a similar, you know, just like Rob, maybe that first game back 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then they'll ramp him up accordingly because just like Rob, he's another guy, not a high amount of offense. I mean, I think he averaged, he averaged less than he had single digit field goal attempts last year at, in Philly. So it's not a guy that's even going to have double digit attempts out there. You know what I mean? So 10 points, 7 8 rebounds, 7 8 assists while playing solid defense, I think is all that Brooklyn is looking for. Some stats, guys, real quick 92 plus percent of the time, a team that has a 2 0 lead goes on to win the series. I believe Brooklyn is now 0 and 7 when they are down 2 0 in a series. And hey, as the title of this video simply states, Rob set to return. The Brooklyn Nets are set to go home. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, I, I, I do still think that there's, you know, a fight here. I believe Brooklyn comes back with a huge, you know, bounce back game in game three. Uh, and I, because again, I believe it was Celtics in six. So we'll have to see, man. Expect a big bounce back game from the Nets game three and again. Bobby, me, pre-game, post-game, watch party, cover, full coverage on Celtics Corner tomorrow. It'll be Bobby's birthday, so a happy early birthday to Bobby. So we'll be doing all the coverage for game three. Thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate it more than you know. Jags to Riches, James Peters, National Robe Day. Post those damn pictures. Game day tomorrow. Thank you all so much. Have an excellent conclusion to your week. Take care.